session, we're going to be doing two things, um, and I'm going to need your um, participation for the second half of it. Um, so MyBlock Counts is a tool that's been in development for a long time. We've gone through several versions of it, um, and we're currently developing a new version of it with the help of um, outside, with the help of outside um, app developers. Um, and so this session today, we're going to, I'm just going to go briefly through the history of my block counts, what it's uh, meant to do and what we've been using it for. Um, and then I'm going to open the floor to y'all um, to kind of give me your thoughts about how the development and how this application should kind of go forth. I'll feed you guys some questions and I really just want to know what your thoughts are. Um, okay. So um, my block counts is a tool that um, the first version was developed back in 2014 as a simple survey. Um, and it is a community science um, tool that allows individuals to kind of create or to uh, assess the environmental um, and socioeconomic factors on the ground in their neighborhood. Um, it allows people to um, kind of identify uh, facilities and also um, bring in more data to uh, research. Um, it's all part of the environmental justice um, belief of involving community and, and, and engaging with on the ground, um, uh, uh, engaging with the individuals on the ground and addressing their concerns on a, a microscopic level. Um, and in order to do that, we kind of have to get data at a microscopic level, which is um, very hard to do at a large scale if we're talking anything beyond your immediate neighborhood. But by, you know, coalescing the efforts of an entire community, we can get a much wider variety of data. So the point of my block counts is basically to allow individuals to assess their communities and, you know, essentially give thumbs up and thumbs down about things in their neighborhoods. This can be everything from the um, amount of sidewalk space they have, to amount of trees growing in their neighborhood, to nearby factories. Where's the, where is the nearest grocery store? Anything you guys can think of, we wanna be able to track in a meaningful way. Um, so this is all kind of part of, like I mentioned, a uh, community science effort. Um, as a, a big portion of environmental justice, as I mentioned, is to en engage the community and have their input as, on um, factors that involve them, right? Um, we don't want to be able, we don't want to be making decisions or impacting people's lives without it having them as part of the problem solving. Um, and so this allows, this kind of tool allows you to do exactly that. All right. Um, so I'm going to actually skip through a good portion of this. Um, but what we are looking for is to determine what portions of your neighborhood are inhibiting, but also helping your um, health outcomes and your environmental justice outcomes, essentially. Um, we want to be able to not only collect data about how um, uh, how you guys are, how the communities are being affected by the environment, but also how people are engaging with their environment and tackling some of these problems. We don't want it to be a, a, a totally negative view of your neighborhood because you live there. And there's obviously some nice things about the places you live. Um, just real quick, um, salutogens are good things, pathogens are bad things. We just want to be able to track both. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So the original BiBlock Counts tool, as I mentioned, was a survey. Um, a literal paper paper survey that um, was passed around and people would fill out and we would take the data back and put it into a spreadsheet and call it a day. Um, it updated, we updated it last year to an online survey, but we had a lot of issues. Um, the main issue that we found was um, the length of the tool was untenable. Um, it was a, I'm trying to find the uh, number of questions we have, yeah. It was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sections of questions. Each section had anywhere from 10 to 40 questions, which is not practical. And not only is it not practical, it's not fun to fill out, right? It's hard to recruit community members to, to do 
data entry and to, to make it feel like actual data entry is just not something anybody wants to engage with. Um, nevertheless, it does provide some like starting points for us to develop the app into the next generation, mainly to talk about what um, data we are trying to collect with this app, um, or rather, what data we were trying to collect with this app. Um, and I would like you guys to give me input there um, about what is good or bad about this kind of data that we are collecting. Um, so we, uh, a lot of it uh, revolves around um, tangible infrastructure um, and uh, things that you can um, track as an individual without having any fancy measurements or metrics. So there's gonna be, there's no um, uh, AQI measurements on here. There's no um, you know, uh, heat temperature measurements. All of the things, all, all of the um, variables we're looking at are things you can observe directly. Um, so this includes things like um, the layout of your neighborhood, the economic opportunities in your neighborhood, the um, uh, factories, industri industrial elements in your neighborhood, and also the condition of your neighborhood. But it also goes beyond into housing, public services, transportation, health, and public safety. And beyond that, there's even more that we have um, have been trying to track, which includes, you know, vacant properties, um, other forms of uh, neighborhood detritus, um, and large-scale uh, industrial waste. So the way it was working um, is we would have individuals put in their address on the on the survey. It would record their address, and then they could just go about um, submitting their information based off of you know the questions we were giving them. Um, I'm honestly I could show you guys the questions, but I really don't think it's going to be that helpful. Mainly because I a lot of them. Uh, are things that I don't really have any good concept of myself as an individual, like as a person who works here. Um, we were asking things like asking people to recognize what power plants were in their neighborhood. I don't know what a power plant looks like. It looks like a factory, right? Like a power plant and a factory look the same to a lay person. So it wasn't really a good method for collecting data. Um, we were collecting it and it was being stored on, the, um, on our servers. Um, and it still is all there, but because of how difficult it is for individuals to use, it's been, um, the, the data has trickled in. And honestly, it's not fun to fill out. It's not fun to fill out a form. Um, so what we're doing now is, uh, and this is the end of the slide, so we don't have to worry about this anymore. But what we're doing now is we're working with um, an organization called Blue Meta, which is a... Um, a software development company um, based out of Baltimore, um, working especially with community um, data projects. And we're looking at um, employing more gamified um, elements into the data collection, kind of making it, trying to make it more intuitive for users, trying to make it more fun and engaging. Um, and as part of that, I am hoping to get um, contributions on how that app should look. Um, as I said, the original application we got, uh, we made was a, um, just a form. Um, so everything is on the table, essentially. Um, so what I'm going to do from here on out is I'm actually just going to read out a um, series of questions. Um, and if there's a question that like strikes your mind, um, and you have an opinion about it or something, just tell me, because uh, that's literally all we're here for. Um, so just to give you guys a little bit of background about what the application is going to look like, um, it's going to be an iOS and Android app. It's um, going to be very similar in terms of data collection. Um, we are looking um, to initially capture people's location but then after that, we don't really have any good concepts of how to collect the data from there. Um, you can, we can assume that most users are going to be using a smartphone, so they'll have GPS access and um, a camera, um, a microphone as well, if that's something that you guys think would be useful. Um, but uh, beyond that, the world is your oyster. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and read this first four questions, all right? Um, how would using an app like My Block Counts fit into your daily routine? Are there any specific factors that would motivate you to contribute information about your neighborhood? Have you used similar apps before? What do you find appealing or frustrating about them? And what would make you feel more engaged with the app and its purpose? That's okay. We have dozens of questions. Yeah. Oh, you mean just like what data is already available? Um, that's a good question. So the reason my block counts is important is because that data does exist. The issue is uh, the generality of it. Um, anytime you have a big institution like the census or your um, local environmental um, agency, their, their scope of collection is usually really large because they're looking at statistical variation. variation. They're not looking at individual components. Um, and so the point of this application is to kind of bridge that gap um, to give the individual components of the neighborhood to researchers so they can kind of make more authentic assessments of a neighborhood. Well, I look down on that because I feel as though not like, especially for like a lot of the data out there, especially when you're thinking about kind of spatial analysis, so much like money. Like, for one, there's a lot of different definitions, definitions out there. So, like, for example, if you have a grocery store or a supermarket, you know, those terms are like, interchangeable. Like, a lot of places are like, listen, but I've recently kind of like, do this stuff for these kind of in a weird way. When you're trying to like look at food insecurity and trying to like measure that, you know, they'll have, you know, somebody that's listed as a supermarket, but then someone else might list it as a grocery store. And there's no like clear definition of what's the difference between a supermarket and a grocery store. And, you know, sometimes within these lists, you know, these are like, she's not looking for actual like, government agencies and you know, local, you know, Yeah, we're, we're, I mean, again, world's your oyster. 
the idea is that we get the most granular information that you guys would think is is important for your neighborhood. Um, so, so yeah, my neighborhood. I would say that uh, vehicular traffic is an issue. So I'm sort of sandwiched in a two block stretch in Frederick, Maryland, between the major Main Street, Frederick City, and another actually industrial, well, it's an industrial area on my east side, which is also a heavily, heavily trafficked area. So, so how about that? Is, is that a factor or a suggestion? You know? Yeah. Yeah. It seems yeah. like it's important to have a lot of uh, big trucks on the east side, especially. Main so I guess the a big question for me is so let's just take let's take vehicular traffic as an example, right? Um, that's something that most neighborhoods have to contend with on some level or another. How would you how would you envision collecting that information about your neighborhood? Obviously, like I'm you know going out and like counting the number of cars is a bit of a mind-numbing task right so so again world's your oyster you can imagine we have an ai you know camera that can track the cars for you or something like that what you know what would make it engaging yeah i was just thinking in terms of when we travel a lot of times we go to google maps and it seems to me like you can take the data from Google because they're always, when you drive and they say something about a traffic jam or they say, go this way or go this way. It seems like Google could give you a lot of data from, from, from collection because it always tells you when, where the traffic jams are. It or seems like you can take where retail is. Yeah, where the retail is. It seems like you can take that information from Google and kind of add that to, you know what I mean? Because like you say, they always monitor traffic. And it seems like you somebody could take that information from Google and tell how much traffic is in that neighborhood on a consistent basis or how much how often the traffic is jammed in the area. Yeah, I wonder who's reporting it to Google where they're getting the error. Um yeah. so but, but anyways, I and I just my yeah. thought would be first to part try to partner with the city of Frederick on this because there are certainly traffic monitors. You see them on the road, you know, it's like a hose, you know, yes. where they count count cars. So I would go to them and say, look, I have some concerns about, you know, environmental justice issues in my neighborhood. Can can you, um, would you be willing to uh, install two of these on its Market Street and East Street in Frederick? Um, you know, I'm, I've got a community group, a uh, nonprofit of starting. Um, you know, the, this is an objective, an objective measure. Uh, you know, the, the, the data won't lie, but let's, uh, you know, we can help the city with your planning, perhaps vehicle planning. Uh, we could help our neighborhood to know what we're facing as far as, uh, you know, vehicle pollution, particulates, and, uh, or even safety issues. So uh, that would be my first thought. And if a person is on my block, everybody has their own internal, you know, that one through five more or less the same whole lot of little bit, which they correlate you know, correlate with what the data is that you get from the city. Not a lot of traffic to me may not be not the traffic to her, but I guess you have these models that will sort of see if you yeah. get five a lot of traffic. Yeah. And would that correlate with the data that is actually gathered by the computer? Um, so just just to make sure I understand what you're saying. Like, so you're talking about using um, that kind of one through five measurement to see if while you might have a high rate of traffic, you might not perceive it as a high rate of traffic. Well, or vice versa. Well, what happens is everybody's consistent with you know their own chronic little high low medium, like they're doing pain scales. Mm -hmm. For everybody's pain scale is consistent within themselves. Sure. And then you can take, you look at a whole lot of folks putting in the app, and you feel like you get really cool 
or box cars, you know, on the highway, few cars, or I can walk across the street, and then that can correlate with the data that's actually um, submitted by the cameras, which could increase the consistency of, of what folks are seeing. Because I don't, I think big trucks on the road, everybody kind of sees that. Sure. Especially if it's on the road. And then you could say, not necessarily subjective, but it's consistent with each other. Each other. So I was saying that that would be linked to the actual rate of traffic. Or how safe do you feel crossing this street? Especially since you'll have the location through their phones. Because I think people like to share their own. It gives you the impression that your opinion counts. What you see, see what you see. Do you think you have enough trees in your neighborhood? Yes, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, that's a really good point. Know, uh, do you have, you know, like cities, I guess they've given it up because of uh, money, but, you know, cities used to be sort of manicured and a little bit garden, you know, if you, if there, there are a lot of flowers or if, are your parks maintained, the grass high, yes or no, because that's the granular level. Do you have dog parks, yes or no? Uh, is there a lot of dog people not picking up their dog stuff? Yes or no. And so it can be in, because I think we want to ask, ask, we ask those questions. Right. Because right. lately you don't feel like anything you can observe or see counts. So I think as a fun app, people will get into that. Right, like that by the trash cans or like recycling bins or like in yeah. the neighborhood, really. You know, is, are like, there rats in your neighborhood? Right. Like, kind of like, on a, like you said, you know, on a personal level, where they're like, you know, they're interacting with their environment, they're actually like being engaged with it. The states around them, so it, that kind of forces people to, you know, then maybe it is incentive to be like, you know, count them on the trash cans, you know, and then you know, it can be like a fun little game to it, you know, as well. You can like invent your neighborhood to the outlets that you can put in the game, but you, of course, are controlled what they can get. So, are there a lot of dogs? Yes, or no. Uh, is there a lot of crime? Yes. What kind of crime? And then it could be like a game thing where it's like robbery or some drugs or some car accidents. Right. And then to like answer like the thing about the incinerator versus factory, I feel like then you will have that input of like, you know, someone that like actually been the name out of that incinerator or factory. So then on the back end, I guess the person on the other side of the app will have to do their research to see if it's actually like incinerator or factory. Reminds me of when we went to the Orioles a couple of days ago. Uh, are there, you know, is, are there a lot of factories at night? Are there a lot of people? Uh, or do you live in the neighborhood with a lot of people? Are are there a lot of houses? Or, is, or what does your neighborhood smell like? Yeah. <laughs> and that will get you to the factory. Mm -hmm. If there's a factory in the neighborhood, well, is your neighborhood noi noisy? They're noisy. I was just going yeah, that. And then you would say morning, noon, or night. And then type of noise say all of the above, and it could be ambos, or because yeah. I have a, someone who hears ambos at least every hour. Or do you feel safe in your neighborhood with another lighting? Ambulance. So my and, and gamify it so that it this so yeah. So my, my question is is would you imagine would you imagine this as an application you would be like You'd be like walking down the street on your way home from work from the bus stop and like, oh, I guess I see a couple cars here, blah, blah, blah. Or are you imagining it like the way you're on the bus and you're just playing a game? Yes. Okay. As long as you publicize and say your neighborhood counts, you think the government knows your data, but you know the data, you know? You know, what do you see? And like you said, what's the likes, what's the distance? What would what would an incentive look like to get people to, to play this game, right? What would what would what would you want to see in you know the welcome page of the app or the results of the app that would be like, oh, this had a meaningful impact or this was really cool or something like that. <clears throat> um, so I guess for me, like like you said, so if our focus is that kind of thing from like work to home, like kind of you know target audience, I feel like you know, like, you know you kind of open the app. Like, I guess for each section, like, you will open the app at certain times, right? So you won't have, like, that type of time window. It's, like, put in certain objectives. So that way, you know, you kind of track. 
a lot of things that are happening at once, and I guess kind of like a point system, so the amount of things that you input, and then you save the amount of things you get, you'll get a prize at the end, so obviously you, you want to make it a ridiculous amount, so that they can, you know, fully engage, so I guess, you and know, you every point of points. Things left. Right, yeah. That will up, you know. Right, yeah, the higher the point, the higher the center, so it could be like, I don't know, like a Starbucks gift card or like something small. Since you have so many categories that could be wrapped up, you know, you go to this one, you get this one, you go to this one, you go to that. No, so I play a lot of that, so. Hey, no, no, this is great. Your neighborhood. She said you can make it like Farmville. Like Farmville, but neighborhood. it's your own neighborhood. And yes. So you answer like about the trees and stuff, you can make it look like populate you want it. Kind of yeah, populate how it looks. Yeah. So uh, very very helpful. Um, so what I think we we kind of covered this a little bit, but I think we should get a little bit more into, into that. What information would be valuable to collect? Do you think? So we've talked about green spaces, dog parks, potholes, amenities, you know, general cleanliness, things like that, noise level, lighting. Um, how does it feel to move around your neighborhood? What is the walkability? Things like that. What else do you think would be like important things that you could measure as an individual from you know the comfort of your bus about your neighborhood? Drink the water. Do you drink the water? Because we live in DC, and I found there's people that don't drink water. I don't, I've, I've lived in DC for 20 years and never once drank the water. Yeah, so and I we drink the water. And it's sort of like when my lady said, oh, I don't ever drink the water. So that's that's a data point, too. But it's and then, so much like chlorine. You don't get in that shower. Mm -hmm. and then you get Not chlorine, that. but bleach. And it's just like, wow, that's a heavy bleach. So then, then that could be, you know, get branch off and say, why don't you drink the water? You know? And, you know, where we stay in Delaware, people don't drink the water because it smells like sulfur. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because we have sewer. Like, you, yeah. you think we're... And asked about sewer water because until we went there, I didn't know that people had septic tanks that leaked to create pollution. You know, do you live near a farm? Like the general was saying. And um, then you could ask, then you could go to the type of community that would be able to say what they like and dislike about being there. And with farm, I remember my son went to, went to a camp with farm kids and they start trying to be 11 years old. So that would be show the different lifestyle there. So you would so you think it would be valuable to have um, an assessment not just of the physical properties of your neighborhood, but leg like legitimately how the general population lives in that neighborhood. Okay. I know that in rural areas, uh, I think one of my patients said that they have to drive an hour. So that's like different, you know, so, which means you already assume, then you're learning your car dependence. Right. And that's the issue of gasoline. And so they think about accessibility and energy, if you're interested in that, or even health care, because they have to drive, you know, an hour to the doctor. So I'm thinking it's just not my neighborhood. What are the amenities and what is accessible in my and if we can keep it along most ways, and you don't have to worry about people emphasizing crime and stuff like right. that. You know, it'd be like health care, how do you go to the grocery store, how do you find a doctor, how far is your doctor? Or even a gym. Or a gym, absolutely. I think people are interested if someone's interested in their life. You won't yeah. play a farm their own Especially if they think they're Yes. Everybody wants to feel included. What would, what do you think, so just building off of what the other are saying, so what do you think would impart to the user that this data that they're giving us does matter? Because we don't have it. <laughs> we don't have it. I don't think people instinctively know. I mean, it's one thing to go on Google 
perhaps I don't always appreciate the income where I spend my money. <laughs> you know, that's not information about my neighborhood. Right. In my experience. <laughs> I can from nowhere to DC driving and I don't drive in DC, okay? <laughs> driving in DC is a whole extra piece. <laughs> well, you can almost like a census. I used to be a census worker to the people that um, never sent in the forms came out. Yeah, right. And in the end, I was like 90% because you make it seem as if people, I'm interested in you as well. You're always going to have those people that feel like you're probably watching them and they're not going to give them any data to go on. That's just. I started to say you had a legitimate neighborhood organization. Like I'm trying to start with Frederick behind this saying, this is why we want this information. Yes. We suspect that this area is getting um, high particulate matter. Uh, the traffic on both sides of us. And uh, yeah. And then you so, can introduce uh, EJ to them. Yeah. yeah. Um, you don't know what you don't know. Um, so when you say um, have a neighborhood organization behind us, do you mean having working with neighborhood organizations to to give people access to this app or working with their neighborhood organizations to use this data? Oh, yeah. So. Or you could link them to their neighborhood organization mm -hmm. from the app and say, if you are really, if you want to participate or you want to get involved in this, Here's a link to your person that's taking care okay. of this in your neighborhood. Right. Or on the opposite end, where you're asking them about the organizations in the neighborhood and like who are they interacting with, what they need resources, or. Mm -hmm. you know, people must be on our ANC and that they had a link to my, what's it called, my data accounts, then you most likely would have just clicked on to it. But that may have you have a more biased population because that would be the people interested in talking about and sharing your neighborhood information. There is, I mean, I think that there is a safe assumption that the folks who are going to be using this are just generally speaking. I mean, don't get me wrong, Malik's a great developer, but his team is only like 20 people. So I don't think he's going to be able to create a full fledged game, you know, with just that. But, um, so there, yeah. So there, I think we can do a little bit of assuming that they, these are going to be folks who are deeply invested in their neighborhoods, or at least tangibly, or you know, tangentially invested in their neighborhoods. Um, so just, just so I can mark down what you were saying. Um, so you were just saying um, have individuals, uh, users of the apps, to, like talk about what organizations they work with in their community to get X, Y, or Z done. Right. Or yeah. get links to them. Yeah. Or. Yeah. All right. Just make sure that that okay. Um, so, actually, I think mean, this kind of dovetails quite well. Um, so, privacy. Um, I, you mentioned earlier, um, people don't want to give Big Brother the information. How can we assure people that this information is going to be used non maliciously? Right? How can we? Can, how can what? What language or kind of what um, presentation can we give folks to be like, to make them assure that, you know, while this data is publicly available, it's, you know, its uses are, you know, for, yeah. Well, I would smile because everybody checks off every box of every game, you don't even read what the doulas are anyway. So that is very like, true. Why would this be different, you know, of course, it's the people information. So I was smiling. I don't know. There is no privacy, but yes. it would have to do the same kind of make it game like too. Right. The state it goes in anonymously so that we can have the community to so you know what communities have and don't have a view or they have too much of it. Or like they were saying, like when we with our situation. 
situation, like people in our, it's kind of like the lower economic neighborhood, um, their main concerns in life are health and safety. So maybe, but no, this data will be compiled anonymously to improve your health and safety. Yeah. It's just not what it is. Because yeah. right now you can't really tell. And there's so many sources. You know, when I go to those GIS things, I want to know. I don't want to go all over the place. I want to be able to know where the hospitals are, where the crime is, where the supermarkets are. You know, we were stream waivers for Maryland. And we can go to that map and we can see all the streams and how much pollution they are. But it doesn't really coordinate to my neighborhood. So I think data is collected, but I don't know how specific it is for my block. I like to be in my block accounts. So just to jump off that a little bit, so you're you're talking more about how to kind of take the the data that is generally publicly collected and available and just kind of personalize it essentially. And then and then add a real question right. about what my experience is. I was thinking of some of the inner city moms I work with. They'd love to be for the uh, school August to uh, uh, too many chicken and fried chicken joints here. No grocery stores here. Library too far to walk. I don't, I, and then you can see where the resources go up or are not. Let's take transportation to see doctor. And transportation is probably for folks who struggle. They design cities. They design them so you never had to leave your yeah, your immediate neighborhood. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Not too much. Um okay, let's uh right, we're gonna move into um uh, visualization. So what would, um, how would you guys imagine um, this data visualized for users, right? Like, again, sky's the limit. Are there pie, pie graphs? Are they, you know, looking through their Farmville map? Are they, what are, you know, what is the most convenient, easy to understand, easy to digest way you'd imagine all of this data being shown to it's like anything internet these days. You have to grab it quick. Thank you, technology, right? Um, just get that information. People don't want to have to scroll through it. They want it right there in their face, Visual. instant, immediate. Maybe Visual. Yeah. So let's say you have a, a user who's put in all this data about the neighborhood, right? They've, they've given you information about where their nearest library is, grocery store, et cetera, et cetera. Now they want to go and see what other people are saying about their neighborhood in comparison with, say, another neighborhood. What would that look like? So, and, but like my, my real question is like, how would that present itself? Kind of, I guess, kind of like a group chat situation where like one will be to the next. So let's just say it will go from like state to like country to city to like, you know, like specifically like area code and then they can make like a chunk. And like, kind of like, I guess it could be like a web, like, I guess other users tab in a way of like, like user response or like, so they could, like share like the top couple like responses to a particular question, or at least just a general like analysis or what has been like reported thus far. Now, how do you think the city government, the governments, are going to react to the information that you collect that may be different from what the city is proposing? The collective information that you had it may you know the city may be saying one thing and then the community may be saying another so how would you i think that you have to work with the, the municipalities to to put this together because it would just seem kind of 
weird if you just did this without the, without having the, the receipt participate in, in your data collection. So yeah. let's sorry. I say that I think there's a silver lining there that uh, you would add credibility to the data if you had the city. Yeah, at least you know providing some of the data yeah. for participating. So yeah, that's what we yeah. We would have to have. I think, like you say, you'd have to have the, some some input from the city, from the municipality. It would be sort of like you get data outside. To me, they would be frowning on your data that that may be different from what they collect. Right. Well, they're, they're, they're probably actually not. I doubt that they're collecting a lot of this data. By the way, but um, I, I, your point is great. Um, but um, yeah, I think uh, questions about the citizen science will definitely come up. And so I think trying to partner with the, the municipalities yeah. as best you can. Yeah, yeah, is a is good advice. Any of the other like local universities or like nonprofits are also doing this research. Yeah, like that way, it, it kind of like you will have, well, and I feel like that could also come towards like a later end as well, because like once everything's like kind of you know is compiled, then you could present it to the municipalities and kind of like see you know what y'all have together, you know, and kind of like integrate with like the information together. So when you cross reference it, then you will be able to pull up things that you know others may be missing. So like for example, like. If we're and say we're talking about like abandoned mines, so for example, you know, when like the this probably will have information about it, but then the university may have information about it. And when you cross reference those maps, you're gonna the the municipalities and the universities are gonna have different minds, you know, it's gonna be minds that they overlook or didn't see because not everything is gonna be reported and not everything is kind of like catalog, you know, as right. the proper processes because a lot of these people don't fully understand what those proper processes are to begin with. So it's just like kind of that cost represent. I feel like that, that could either happen in the beginning, kind of happen towards, you know, in the end, but like eventually you would have to like have an intersection. So we feel like best address, you know, what's going on. So actually on that note, um, I'll, I'll get to you right, right after this. Um, how would you, how would you show the user they've inputted something wrong? Right. So if we're, if, yeah. So if we're, if we're, um, like, let's just say we're cross referencing our data with municipal sources and we have one set of municipal sources that says there's a stop sign on the street and an individual says there isn't a stop sign there. Now, in, in this hypothetical, the individual is just on a wrong crosswalk, right? So there is actually a stop sign at the right crosswalk, but he's just not there. Or they're just not there. How would you go about? Correcting the user in app. So I guess then that will come to towards like the front end where you are already have like the uploaded like the original information within that app. Yeah. But yeah. so then when like the user puts something in and it's an error and like so then that's where that error comes into play. But if they are like insisting that they are in the right spot, then I feel like then they could be option for you know to get pictures after that way. But they enter it correctly, then I guess then I'll be the one. And my data says, and if he says sure, then that would be something to check on. Okay. I started to say if it's something like a stop sign and you get an error message, um, you know, because of the data you know that the municipality has. Results in the error message. Uh, take a photo. You know, you can take a photo and send it. You know, to the municipality. Say, uh, you know, uh, your data is wrong. Yeah. So then you could so take a photo. I could be wrong. Okay. Yeah. Somebody wanted a souvenir. Somebody wanted a souvenir. Talking about a mine. So I can see this. So we have this mine. Well, what are the people who live around the mine? That's the important data. You know, if it's safe, do they know what is there? Do you know, is it been starved? You know, does it smell? So I can see how it complements 
the data that could be from the state or the county map over there. Because that's what you don't know. Does that make sense? I think so. So you're so you're saying that like Okay, so I'll give you an example. Please. We grew up uh, in a small valley. We had all these people. It used to be known as Chemical Valley of the World. So it's a dubious honor. So then the word my neighbor is, does your neighborhood smell? Yes. <laughs> How many days of the week does your neighborhood smell? All ever all the time. Then well, what does it smell like? Uh, Super Mario Jazz. It smells like, you know, duh, 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 duh. and then that, that's a lot of data, which could be cross referenced to whether DuPont was aware or if they had an error or they just put out all their stuff and didn't care because nobody could track them. Do you live on the riverbank? Yes. Do you ever get in the water? No. Why is that? Because my skin would fall off. You know. These are experiences that wouldn't necessarily be picked up by the city or the county, but this discovery, this is like a quality of life, my block kind of thing. So just to make sure I have this bit right. So you're I see they have compliments. So yeah, so you're saying you're saying basically just like what anecdotal kind of lived experiences. Lived experiences, yes. Thank you. Is there is your neighborhood flow of coke with flooding? Yes. How often do you wash your car from the pollution of the dust and sand particles? Yes. Pollution of pollution particles. A lot of times you go out to your car and you can see all this mixed cars and window windshields. When that when those fires were happening over the summer, yeah. yeah. My car was just I just have to, every day I just go to bed for a week. You know, they talk about it. Some with experiences of the folks near it. Did they ever interview folks who were like in New York City? That would be our little experience. We were in Washington, and I still haven't watched my car, but I didn't smell anything. Or, you know, it's, yeah. 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 It's oh, yeah, smell. You can see it. Yeah. Yeah. You can see it. Yeah. That, that sort of is in the uh, in between sort of the I guess geographical, you're around, whatever data, and then there's some of the experience, which we don't really have a whole lot of. So, so on that, um, because we kind of, we're kind of transitioning into the, the lived experiences of um, the environmental and climatological factors of your environmental justice, and like I said, obviously that's not something you can like walk around a Caribbean AQI sensor with you, but that is a way you can kind of measure that impact. Okay. Especially if you get, you know, 100 or 200 responses. It and seems like that should be something that the city should be doing now. Mm -hmm. Putting these monitors in, in like 10 or 15 parts of the city so they can actually collect the data. And that's, you know, there's there's four, count of four state funded air quality sensors in the city of Maryland. <laughs> the red state. light can. Should they put it Four? Yeah, but there's four. That the state that the state has uh, paid for and keeps track of. <laughs> there are a lot. Of them. What, are we, what are we talking about cost for, for, for something? It's pretty expensive to get a high quality one, but low quality ones can or I mean high quality ones can range anywhere from five to fifteen thousand dollars, but like low quality commercial ones can range anywhere from a hundred to three hundred dollars. It seems like that would be such a small amount compared to what they spend on health care for respiratory problems. So does anybody know how much a red light can You don't even know. That could be $20,000. Well, the issue with that is that, right, the municipalities make some money off of that, right? Exactly. So. I wonder, though, would, would it be, like, beyond the pale, say, for if you have, you know, if you're using this application and you've, you see in your neighborhood that you know 40 people have mentioned it smells like rotten eggs and you know 10 people have mentioned that there's a factor chemical factory over there 
What would giving a red light ticket to that factory look like from a user standpoint? I was thinking the same thing. Monitors. Why couldn't they figure out where the blue is coming from and then issue a ticket to you know a fine or a ticket to whoever you know put the pollutants out they should be able now they should be able to, to, to figure out where and who's putting out the pollutants so let's so so taking that analogy a little bit further how how would you envision this information being um like disseminated and, and just given out to the public um, to kind of show that connection? Like, would it be, would would a, a thing pop up to let you like tweet out your results? Or would you, would it be a, a button that would send, send your results to your representative? Or, um, yeah, these are just ideas, but like, what, what would that look like, do you think? What would be a, a, a way you would get this information out that people would understand initially and intuitively like X, Y is related to Z? That was a separate option, like infractions. Like, you know. So you have one the, in the act, you have within the act, uh, I don't know who was saying it. You, you said a red light camera for pollution. So does that finally too just have you know, all your categories of concern, and you have an option to go to this um, party and it lists them as they come in, or it gives you an alert in real time on your phone. You know, go go to the go to the violations. Um, might be a better term. Go to the violations uh, option, and uh, you know, there's an alert. Something just came in. Uh, X Factory. Um, our monitor has picked up uh, PM 2.5 on uh, Elm Street uh, in excess of Safeway. So that kind of so so just so I'm kind of understanding this correctly, I'm 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 kind of envisioning it like you guys ever use like the Waze app or anything like that, and you're and you're you're driving along and you see a uh, you see a cop on the side of the road, and you just kind of mark down. There's a cop here. Uh, do you? Is it? Do you kind of see it like that? Like, because uh, we have to. We have to consider that there's. We're not going to have like in in situ AQI monitoring, right? So, um, if let's say you're you're walking around your neighborhood, you smell fumes, um, or it's like suddenly becomes hard to breathe, and you mark that down on your app. Would that then? Would you then want that to show to people in your neighborhood or kind of like just keep it as a data or both? I think it, should, you know, I mean, it goes back to me thinking about the explosion they just had to fill yeah. up where I was born. And I'm sure some of these neighborhoods, we had one up in Silver Spring a few years ago where our house blew up. And I'm thinking that oh, I don't natural know. gas yeah. was, was the reason. It seemed like if they had some testers or something like that, these neighborhoods, then they can maybe know when these gas leaks were happening before they even happened. Yeah, well, even if it's just a citizen reporting it, like you were just saying, yeah, I think real time is important. I mean, it's not going to help you to have, you know, have it blocked in some, yeah, in some chart of data that, you know, oh, yeah, uh, this thing blew up. Yeah, right. I mean, you want, you want an alert? You want to alert them to pop up, you know, and in real time. Yeah. So even if it, you know, turns out maybe it's a false alarm, you know, maybe somebody got their facts wrong, you know, there's a just a smoking car going down the road, you know, not a not a fire, but um, whatever. So, so how expansive would you I'm, I'm, I know we're running close to time, so we'll keep this to like last two two more questions. But so they have been brainwashing to see one, see something, say something. Oh, yeah. So that way, that could be part of it because that's something. There is an intersection of the There's always that. And it's sort of like, why didn't they change the signals to this accident? You know, um, I don't even know if they put it together 
the dead intersection has a whole lot of accidents. Every weekend of some sort of major accident. Yeah, and so because it's one of those confusing DC. Right, yeah. Section. And every time, it seems like every other time the light changes, somebody gets a ticket. You can see the light at the night. The ticket flashes. But not necessarily reporting accidents and then making causes. The thing of it is, they're not making a change to the data that they already have. So and I know this is that nobody has to have all this data, all these accidents and all these tickets and everything from the same. And maybe they don't want to change it because they're making money they on the money tickets, off. but it's not it's still impacting the lives of people who are having an accident. So just think about it in a year's time, how many people are living out of work with children and car accidents, finance, and all this because they don't want to make a change. So, so yeah, yeah, it has to. To me, it's bureaucracy. It has a lot. Yeah, but I, I don't, I don't, but we are 311 where you make reports. I don't see that it is effective. Maybe this would be more to add into the data, real time reporting. Um, or in your face, if you don't mind it because it's coming from Because it's coming from the people. Now they say, so we feel the mod, say, see something, say something. It's not sort of a, they only want to hear, I guess, in terms of like what they're interested in. And if yeah. say something, they don't want to hear us see the uh, but another thing is people, it's, it's if, if, if they're not going to want to see any results from this, why, why do you think? Why yeah, do, that's a really good point. Yeah. And that's a whole to me, people say, well, it's just another survey. Because yeah, yeah, we get surveys in the mail all the time. Yeah, okay. And then, you know, what what are going to be the results? I don't Can you tell me what I'm going to get for this after I finish it? Right. So, so this is what I do. I can look up my old neighborhood in South East 43 3rd Street South East and know what it is, the experience there, what are the facilities there, library, school. What are the grocery stores there? Not just the crime statistics. How safe it is. You know, what are the what's the recreation? I mean, if 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 they can track everything I've ever bought online, we can't keep track of how we live from the moment to moment. And that's a question that I ask. I can get like I order something on his phone. And he gets an advertisement for it for three months. In a way, why can't we use citizen generated data for health and safety that way also? So, kind of like using uh, like the associative factors, right? We've put in this data about you know our water or air quality, and my lived experience is that I have COPD, right? And and we can say that like these these things are somewhat somehow related and you can kind of keep this pushing is, that. This is what goes with you know where we live, we don't even know the uh, the borders of our lots. And so when I do the G E G I S to see where I and I'm like back to the home, there's no borders. So there's no information about where we live. Can you break that down for me a little bit? Well, we live in a manufactured home park in, in Lewis, Delaware, a wealthy little town. I know Lewis very well. Yeah. And um, we had to get annexed to the city because our land was a slum work and we were having unsafe sewer leaking out over for 20 years and water. But when you look at our property on those Delaware maps, it just has, because he's an owner, it's just one large space, except it's supposed to be 180 lots. So, just being caught, and so only homeowners, people who actually own a home, rather than renting from the land, you'll see their their pieces of land. When we look in DC, we can see ours, but we can't see where the homes are and not be back to home park, which means that you will not have lived experience. You won't know how much time there is. You won't know what the house status is. You won't know anything. And Except we won't know where the liquor store is, because that'll be Google. <laughs> you know, Google, right? <laughs> and, and, and you know, you, you gotta drive to where else you store, yeah. you know, and where to spend money. And so I just think that that's not right that we can 
always know where to spend money, but we don't know anything about how to live what our neighborhoods are like. So I like the five five months. So, so, and then the other thing is yeah. that Casey Trees has decided to be forest Washington. Well, they must have a map of Washington where all the trees are. Why can't we figure out that we have high, low, medium density of trees? Why I should be able to look that data up. And it should be on my farm bill app called My Block Counts. We never had a dog park until recently. Um, but I think that's on the map. Maybe not. And just think, but we don't definitely know where this, the gasoline station is. I just don't think that the data is equal. That's just okay. How are we doing? So, on time, think, if you want to look at stuff, just kind of look at where you spend money. Let's not just know where the crime is, let's see what the quality of life is. The bigger the bill, then you'll only know that. As you care to somebody that's been fine, then you know exactly that's what I was thinking look at something from the outside, but you don't really know what the lived experience is. So if you can go, hey, this is how it is to live in this neighborhood. By the folks who, by the people that live there. And you don't have to do that. Okay. Um, no, I think that's, this has been really, really helpful. Um, by um, uh, yeah, this has been very, very helpful. Uh, I think this, we are at time. Um, but uh, if you guys have any um, more suggestions where you just kind of think of more stuff. Um, oops, oh, I unplugged it. Um, my email is on, it should be on in the program. Uh, my name is Eli Straussman. Um, and I would I really appreciate you guys. If you guys have any more suggestions or comments or anything, please hit me up. I'm very interested to hear what you guys have to think, okay? You can help us future with mapping? Uh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm the GIS analyst here at Siege. Yeah, we can talk about it. Yeah, let's uh, let's uh, exchange contacts. Okay. Certifications. Certifications? Yeah. Not us individually. Um, the university does. If you're looking to get started in um, in GIS, are you? Yes. Yeah. Um, the our department actually doesn't do. Um, GIS training. Um, that's its own. GIS is its own department here at the university. Um, I, I got my master's through there, so you know it's all right. Um, at, the, at the university, of Maryland. yeah. Um, and the, um, I will say, are you experienced with the technology at all? Yeah. Um, so you don't need a cert. Very well. Though. I know. You but don't I need a cert. Like, because I've only taken the intro class, right? And like I. Like, I feel like it's like I actually know like the nitty gritty where I feel like I need to like be in a classroom setting. It's like 